The sports card hobby is going to expand over the next few years, but it's not going to be for necessarily the reasons that you might think. You take the card and put it in the sleeve. And we're going to talk about that here today. What's going on, sports card hobby family? It's the end of the week. I have got a family wedding to go to this weekend in Ohio. No, I won't be close enough to where Neo is to see him, but I'm looking forward to it. A little drive out with my wife, with just the two of us. We're going to head out. That should be a very good time. Friends, if you're new here and you're looking for daily sports card content that is semi-educational and semi-entertaining, right, Alf? then you have come to the right place. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Huge thanks to our Friday shout outs. Card capsule, all the supplies and cases that you're gonna need and you deserve 10% off because the world is getting expensive. Sports card dad code gives you 10% off at card capsule. You have a collection, you don't know where to go to get it appraised. How much is it worth? Justcollect.com is the place to be to check it out. They've got a very easy appraisal form on the website, so make sure to check out justcollect.com to get your collection appraised. Wooten Sports Cards on Whatnot, my guy, selling all kinds of singles. All the goodness sells out just about every week on Whatnot with all the shenanigans and stupidness that happens in the live streaming world and you're just looking for something kind of normal, go over and check out Wooten Sports Cards cards before he sells out on whatnot. All right, friends, so the 10xing the hobby is so tired and exhausting and just dumb. And I know that there's a lot of people that are going to say, oh my gosh, you're being so negative about this. And I'm going to give you the reason why this hobby actually will expand. I don't want to say 2x or 3x or 10x because I think those are just kind of dumb numbers to throw out there. Because I think people equate it to like, oh, the cards that I own, if they 10x, then they're going to be worth 10 times as much. So let me just continue to buy Justin Herbert cards and uh, Wimby cards and whatever because it's all going to 10x, right? And that's not what we're talking about here. But the main reason why the hobby will expand over the next few years, I actually think we're going to have a pretty strong decade of it expanding. And here's the reason why I think that is because the world continues to get more and more weird and strange. I'm here in the United States. I know we've got Canadian viewers. We've got viewers all over the world. The majority, though, are in the United States. And I think that there's a lot of people that are like me around my age. I'm 43 that look around at what's going on. I know we've got election season, so election season brings out all the weird, but you kind of look around and you're like, man, this is exactly not what I grew up with in the 80s and the 90s. All the nostalgic goodness that we celebrate now with all, with the ALF and the, every, the Beavis and Butthead and the Ninja Turtles and the Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, all the stuff that's in this room right here is me just hearkening back to better days. And I know that's going to sound strange. People are like, yeah, you're just living in your childhood or whatever. But it's not even just like being in my childhood and there not being as, as much responsibility, but just a more simple world out there pre-internet. The internet's look, the internet has brought a lot of great things. This right here is probably the best thing that I can think of in my life is that I'm able to so easily connect with people all over the world. And that's thanks to the internet and the YouTubes making that all happen. And so, yes, there are good things that, yeah, in 1988, you had to be hired onto a news station to be able to talk to people through their television or at the radio station or whatever. All of that's changed. We have social media now. And I love the fact that anybody can come up with ideas, put them out there into the world. And, and really, anybody can grow kind of an audience, grow a channel, whichever platform you prefer. I really enjoy that. But I think a side effect of that is, is that because everybody can get out and talk and kind of express themselves and show what they're doing, you're like, oh man, like maybe I didn't need to know all of that. Maybe I didn't want to know that. And so of course now we have to curate the feed and make sure like, hey, this is what I want to watch and this is what I want to take in. And a lot of people will say like, ah, but you're not really taking in other ideas and you're not listening to, you know, the other side of the conversation. You know, in some cases, I really don't need to hear the other side of the conversation. I've already heard it. I've already heard it a hundred times, and I feel pretty good about where I land on on where I'm at. So, you know, I don't know. It's it's a strange world, but yes, the 80s and the 90s is kind of, it's a more simple time. I'm not saying that everything was so much more amazing back in the 80s and 90s. There's certainly things socially, economically that have gotten better over time. Absolutely. 
But I just think it's the simplicity of the way that the world was going back, you know, during those days. And again, I know nostalgia kind of always makes you remember things in a, in a tainted way. We're kind of wearing kind of the, what is it, the heart-shaped glasses or whatever they call it. When we, when we think back to those times, there was also bad things that happened. I mean, when in 1992, my parents got divorced, it shook my whole world. So I'm not going to pretend like, you know, it was all just amazing back then. But I do think that the collectibles and all the stuff, the cards... That was my coping mechanism as a kid. And as an adult, with the world being as strange as it, as it is, and all the responsibilities, of course, of being an adult, I've got four kids and a family, you know, this is kind of the happy place. This is a place where it's like I get to come and hang out with you guys for 10 minutes a day, and it just makes my life that much better. Now, how does that relate to the hobby as a whole? I just think there's more and more people like me that will eventually do exactly the same thing. And they're like, you know what? This is a place, as many dumb things that happen in our little sports card hobby or little collectible space and a scammy type stupidness that does happen here, you can find, you can carve out your little space here very easily. There are so many different options in terms of sports cards and collectibles. I mean, you can go the new product route, you can go the breaking and the gambling route and all that stuff. You can just collect singles. And if you decide that you want to just collect singles, really the world is your complete oyster out here. I mean, you can come, you can collect stuff that's from the 1800s. You can collect Disney cards from the 1940s, 50s. You can collect, you know, all sorts of different things, vintage baseball, 90s inserts. And which players do you want to collect? There's different price points depending on the player. You can play the price game. You can play kind of the flip game and the speculation game. There's stuff for everybody. And for me, instead of turning on the news and listening to what some pundit's got to say about something, you know, for me, I would rather scroll on eBay and compare prices for this card or that card or listen to some hobby commentary. They're collecting this. Why are they doing it? And maybe that's for me what, a, what a, you know, a lot of people watch, you know, the Kardashians or they watch, you know, the, the real estate shows, the reality shows. Maybe this is kind of like my version of the reality show is you get to, you know, listen to hobby content. And it doesn't matter what type of hobby content that is, whether it's dramatic type stuff or it's, or it's collecting type stuff. Just listening to somebody speak about the hobby that we're all partaking in. I don't care who it is or what it's about. It's better than me turning on the news and listening to some idiot give their opinion on what's happening in the world. I'm good. You know, thank you. I'm good. We've talked about it before. When you're 40, when you're 35, 40, 45, you get up in age, it's not super easy to make new friends. I mean, unless you join some sort of a club, you're in a fishing club, you're in a bowling club, you know, whatever. You're in a, you know, a, a golf club, you play golf with buddies. But a lot of times, like your golf buddies, you've been playing golf with them for a while. Or you meet somebody through another friend, and frankly, you just don't have time. So if you've got friends, you have, you know, uh, two or three guys that you hang out with that you have time for occasionally. Maybe it's other couples. You know, the wife is friends with, with the other wife and your buddies with him, you know. But I mean, nobody has time to hang out with a lot of friends. This is such an easy way for me to just be around like-minded people, the camaraderie there. When we talk about going to Fanatics Fest or going to the National, whether I'm hanging out with other content creators or company folks or viewers, that is such a great time. That is a little kind of escape from the real world where we just get to go hang out with like-minded people. And, and again, that's why I think the snowball effect of this hobby, and it's not necessarily just sports cards. You see it with you know action figures or comic books. There's a lot of different layers to collectibles where people are getting back in and finding like-minded people and just enjoying themselves. I know it can be kind of clicky and we have fun kind of making fun of each other or whatever, but it's all kind of part of that fun ecosystem that frankly, it's just better than what's on the outside world. So I think that really for, for the, the midlife crisis folks, for the folks that are 40 plus like me, you know, this is the great escape. It's the escape from all the stupid that is out there in the world that we just can't relate to. And so just some quick thoughts, my friends, but I think honestly, regardless of what Fanatics does for marketing, what Panini does for marketing, what anybody does for marketing, I think eventually people just find this hobby. Now, how many people stay in and like come in and go? I, I do think there's a lot of people too that kind of pop in and pop out. I have viewers like that. You know, all of a sudden, it might have been a year, I get a comment from somebody. I'm like, oh man, I recognize this, this username that's commenting. People come in and out of stuff, just like you might be playing golf for a year straight and then you're like, oh man, you know, my back hurts. I'm not going to go out there or, you know, financially it's just expensive, taking a break from it. Then you go back to it. And I think that that's what this is too. People are going to come back into this. So one thing I would say to the fanatics of the world that are so focused on that next generation, you know where you're really missing? Where you're really actually missing 
are more 40 year olds. It's just more people like me that have disposable income that are just looking for an escape from the real world. So don't forget about us. Don't forget about those folks when you're doing all the writ, the writ nights and all the, all the stuff. It does not just all the, you know, the teenagers and the 20 somethings, you know, the, the people that have the money are in their forties and fifties. All right, my friends, stay healthy, stay awesome. And I will talk to you again later.